we are finally getting to see different parts of Elbath, and there are some very interesting things I'm noticing in the first chapter of the arc. The first location we see the crew in is at Big Stein Castle, and for a land full of giants, it seems oddly small for them. Panels such as Nami in the hallway, Usopp in the cat's mouth with the stairs next to them, and the view of Nami and Usopp falling with the lower level windows in view. None of these seem to be on the scale required for giants to be able to look out of, or use, such as Dory and Brogy, or Vice Admiral John Giant. And that makes me think that Elbaf is actually just one island or realm in the region of Warland, One Piece's Viking Ark. Now, if we're gonna think that the region of Warland holds nine different realms, as I'll call them here for its Norse mythology theme, then Elbaf is just one region that we've heard from in the story so far, with the closest comparison being Tadaland, where Big Mom resided on Whole Cake Island that was surrounded by its 34 subsidiary islands, and each island having its own candy or sweet theme. Now, in Norse mythology, we've got Asgard, Midgard, Vanaheim, Jotunheim, Alfheim, Nidavellir, Niflheim, Muspelheim, and Helheim. And with this, Oda has a really great opportunity to incorporate this into the story of One Piece and give each island its own theme comparable to the realms around the world tree, with their own little One Piece twist, of course. So let's talk about what this can likely entail. The realm of the Aesir gods, Asgard, is the first realm we should touch on. And this is where I think we can likely find characters like Prince Loki and King Odin residing. Assuming Oda introduces Odin into the story, which I can't imagine why he wouldn't with a Viking themed arc when we already have characters like Loki and settings like Yggdrasil. The term Asgard is actually derived from two words, as meaning God and Garther meaning enclosure, garden or yard which is fitting because the realm of Asgard was mostly closed off from all the other realms. Because of this, I can see Oda creating an island where the royalty of the country reside in a largely closed off fort or castle dwarfing the kingdoms that we've seen in the past. I don't believe this is where Big Stein Castle is. However, seeing as only Nami and Usopp were shown in the castle with the porcupine and cat before getting saved by the monster trio, it's hard to tell. Next is the Midgard realm, or the realm of humanity. In Big Mom's flashback at Sheep's House Orphanage, we saw that most of the members were of various races. Some giants, some normal human kids, and I believe that it's also the same island we see Shanks and his fleet on when Kid comes to give him, give him a good old round two for all the good that it did him. Now, of course, with this being the land of the giants, there are also going to be giants in Midgard, or in the Midgar themed island. So it's likely we'll see or hear of other settlements around the island with primarily humans and giants intermingling or primarily giants with more green scenery and forests and mountains around it. Then there's Vanaheim, the realm of the Vanir. The Vanir are a race of gods responsible for wealth, fertility, and commerce and subordinate to the warlike Aesir. And of those, wealth and fertility stand out to me the most personally. I can see this vanaheim like island being the center for trade in a region where many of the giants from the other islands come in and it's you've got big settlements big towns where there's marketplaces everywhere maybe goods and food that are abundant in one island get brought over to this island so members from the other islands could come in and purchase them and do some trading we may actually find the straw hats going through part of it to get supplies to upgrade the thousand sunny as it approaches the end of the new world or even some new equipment now speaking of new equipment good god usopp replace the slingshot please do not let Usopp go into the end of series with a fucking slingshot, Oda. I'm begging you. Give this man a gun. Somebody please get this man a gun. But I digress. In opposition to Asgard, we have Jotunheim. This is the land of the Jotun, non-human, non-divine creatures such as giants and trolls. Now, the gods that take up residence in Asgard despise the wild Jotun. It's here on this island in Warland that I believe we can find the origins or involvement of the Ark's villain, or antagonists in the Straw Hat's way. Some of the most notable descriptions of Jotunheim are being a cold, forbidding land of vast, towering forests, mighty mountains, rivers, and streams, with the giants inhabiting it being frost and mountain giants. And it's frost giants like the Yeti Cool Brothers that we saw all the way back in Punk Hazard that 
that kind of support this little theory of mine. I, I think that they came from Warland near Elbath and they were part of a, a wintry island in the region, which would fit that Jotunheim theme. With Alfheim next, the realm inhabited by the elves is one seldom mentioned in most sources within the realm of the light elves and the dark elves. But to be honest, little is known of Alfheim. In the Marvel comics and Thor, the realm is described as a wondrous place with springs of wine, trees that produced candy fruit and endless gardens. It sounds like a vacation to me. It really does. <laughs> So I imagine Oda can take that and make an island of luxurious food and mead that the giants eat and trade with other islands in Warland. Next is the home of the dwarves, Nidavellir, a cavernous and subterranean realm. It is said to be located in the north, presumably a reference to its position on Yggdrasil, so it's likely one of the northernmost islands in the Warland region for One Piece. And it's here where the crafty dwarves fashioned wares regarded as the best in the Nine Realms. Oda could take this chance to have the Nidavellir island be a like a crafting hub in warland where they get all their weapons from for the the giant pirates and the different settlements in, around warland where the best blacksmiths can work on their equipment now for niflheim where its ices stand in opposition to the flames of muspelheim with both encroaching in Gunungagap, meeting somewhere in the middle it's a comparison much like punk hazard's half and half island another winter island like jotunheim though one much more capped with ice rather than snowy forests where we could see another race of ice giants or snow giants like the yeti cool brothers and then we have muspelheim a molten realm of heat and flames. In Norse creation myths, Muspelheim's fires actually melt the ice of Niflheim, and from that melted ice came the droplets that formed Ymir, the first giant. The receding glaciers then revealed Buri, the progenitor of the Aesir tribe. It can be an island in one piece as a island of lava and fire in the Warlane region where the giant blacksmiths reside and forge their weapons using the lava and fire around them, with obviously a one piece twist on the vibe of the island. Now, during Ragnarok, it was the fires of Muspelheim that would consume the world. Now, it's hard to say who or what will be the culminating villain during the Elbaf arc, but I can see the Straw Hats being involved in a Ragnarok-like event where the island that resembles the Norse realm of fire will house the Ark's villain. And lastly, we have Helheim or Hell. In Norse tales, Helheim is a subterranean region located in the mythological north and is the dwelling place of departed souls. Now, the Hell in Norse mythos is very different from the eternal suffering depicted in Christian religion. Rather, it's depicted as a land of startlingly abundant life on the other side of death where men and women drank, fought, ate, slept and so forth. It wasn't a place of eternal bliss like the fighting halls of Valhalla, but it also wasn't the torment and eternal pain from the Christian Bible. Just a continuation of life somewhere else. And I believe if there was an island that could represent this Norse passage in life, it would be one of remembrance dedicated to those who have either fallen in battle or passed away due to age, with special graveyards or monuments built throughout the island. With the arc finally beginning, it's gonna be very exciting to start seeing all the different parts of Elbath and the Warland region. And Oda has a great opportunity to really run with the nine realms or nine islands of Warland. And, you know, just put a little ribbon on the gift that is One Piece's next arc. As anyways, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think the villain of the arc is someone who's from the island or could it be somebody from outside the region coming in? For example, Admirals and the Gorosei coming to Egghead versus Kaido and Big Mom who resided in the Wano and the Whole Cake. Comment down below if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want more One Piece content. We're on the road to 500 subs and the more people to share my videos with the better. As for that, I will see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful night.